Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So happy to see everybody here today. So it looks like we have uh, Dr. Marita will be our speaker, and we have Rebecca Hall uh, for our special music, and Nick Milan on the piano. If you will uh, please uh, put your phones on silent, that would be great. Thank you. Modern science. <laughs> Put it in my pocket. Perfect. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Well, finally, <laughs> I'm so glad to see you all. I'm so glad to be here. I welcome you all for this Thanksgiving service, which is a special one. And I also welcome all those who are seeing us on the internet. You're so important to us as well. Beautiful day. Beautiful day, inside and out. Uh, our Bible verse this morning is from St. Paul, who said, In all things give thanks. A wonderful statement. <clears throat> Dr. Joseph Murphy once gave a beautiful but rather simple example of the method and the value of prayers of thanksgiving. He said, the thankful heart is always close to the creative forces of the universe, causing countless blessings to flow toward it by the law of reciprocal relationship based on a cosmic law of action and reaction. And he gave an example of it. <clears throat> he said, Mr. Broke applied this technique with excellent results. He said, bills are piling up, I'm out of work, I have three children to feed, and no money. What am I going to do? Well, regularly, every night and every morning, he repeated the words, Thank you, Father, for my wealth. Thank you, Father, for my wealth. <coughs> He said it in a relaxed, peaceful manner until a feeling, a mood of thankfulness began to dominate his mind. He imagined that he was addressing the infinite power of intelligence within him, God within him, knowing, of course, that he could not see this creative intelligence that was at work, but he was seeing within the inner eye of our spiritual perception, he was realizing the thought image of wealth was the first cause relative to the money and the position and the food that he needed. That was the first thing one had to do, it was the first cause. His thought feeling was the substance of wealth unaffected by any other conditions that existed in his life. So, repeating, thank you, Father, over, 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 over again. His mind and his heart were lifted up to the point of inner acceptance. And when fear came upon him, or Thoughts of lack, poverty, what am I going to do? His stress came into his mind. He would stop, stop himself. And he would begin saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. As often as he needed to, to get past that feeling of fear. He knew that as he kept up with this thankful attitude, he would recondition his own mind to the idea of wealth. That's exactly what happened. Dr. Murphy said the sequel to his prayer was very interesting. After praying in this way, 
he met a former employer of his on the street, hadn't seen this man for 20 years. The man offered him a very lucrative position and advanced him $500 on a temporary loan. Today, he said, Mr. Broke is vice president of the company for which he works. And what this man said to Dr. Murphy was, I shall never forget the wonders of thank you, Father, because it's worked miracles in my life. What a lovely story. In all things give thanks. In all things give thanks. It's something to remember, something to chew on, something to celebrate. <coughs> because it is a clear and dependable path toward greater and greater good in our lives. We put that into the pocket of our heart and bring it out and think about it, use it, because it works. It works. Shall we say our statement of being, you'll find in the front here on the television, God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God, and am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance.
much. That was just lovely. <laughs> lovely. It's a time for our healing meditation. And so we get still. We just check our faces and our jaws and our shoulders and relax, let go. Permit the, the peace to ebb in. The ease. The tensionlessness. And it, that which is heavy or tight ebbs away. And we're left with a feeling of peace. A feel of gen feeling of gentle assurance. But yet, there might be uh, challenges, some large, some small. Through the golden path of gratitude, they can become as nothing. They can disappear like the wind. It was high yesterday, but today it's calm. And so it can be with life. As we get still and give thanks, as Jesus did in advance, for that solution for the change in events or individuals or consciousness. Oh, what a relief it is. <coughs> Depending on God seems ephemeral. But trust in that omnipresent spirit of good, that omnipresent force of immense, unbelievable power and goodness and joy, understanding and wisdom and love. Above all things, love. To trust that, that same force that made us and made this whole vast universe, this beautiful planet on which we live. Trust. It is trust well placed. with gratitude, with a consciousness of that presence, unseen, perhaps, except through its activity in us and around us, in other lives, in those whom we love, those who are just strangers, we see that activity of good taking place when we look. Trust it. Trust it because it is 100% dependable. Let us, with a sense of gratitude, Trust God right now. Speak to Him. Connect. Relax into 
the omnipresence. And unburden yourself. And when you do, give thanks. Give thanks. And watch the miracles unfold. In the next 90 seconds, you'll have an opportunity to talk to God and then give thanks. Generating an awareness of this unbelievable power available to you. for good, for solutions, for freedom, for understanding. Thank you, dear God, that it is so. And shall we start right now? Unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Or if you're not heavy laden, God will give us rest. God will give us opportunity. God will bring greater good into our lives than we've had before. Come unto me. Come unto me. That's our part. His part is the greater. Ours is just to believe. His is to bring into our lives all those disparate things that need to happen to solve our problem, to create the path to greater good. And right now we we accept that challenge and trust. Come unto him. Thank you, beloved, that it is so. Amen. Shall we read together the Translation. It's Dr. Rocco Erico's translation of. Uh, he's from the Neuro <coughs> Foundation. That's him. We'll say this beautiful prayer together. Tra the new translation of the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> together. Amen. Our Father who is everywhere, your name is sacred, your kingdom is come. Your will is throughout the earth, even as it is throughout the universe. You give us our needful bread from day to day. 
And you forgive us our offenses, even as we forgive our offenders. And you let us not enter into materialism, but you separate us from error, because yours are the kingdom, the power, and the song and praise from all ages, throughout all ages, sealed in faith, trust, and truth. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Well, this is Thanksgiving service 2021. And this morning I want to do something that I really never have done before. That is, to use a Thanksgiving service to give thanks for the people who are no longer with us. Those who have moved into that greater reality that um, we call death, but which is certainly not a matter of ceasing to exist, as some people think, but who are living now in the full understanding of what they are, eternal children of God, souls that are bursting with soul knowledge and wisdom and reveling in the full experience of God's unconditional love. If anything, they are more alive at this very moment than they were when they walked the earth. Something that at least in part inspired me to do this today was a conversation with an old friend, uh, someone along with his wife who was part of our, our church at one time, but who moved to another city um, quite a few number of years ago actually <coughs> because they wanted to be close to their only son who had recently married, and uh, they wanted to be uh, close to him. Well, sadly, this friend, this friend's wife, died uh, three or four years ago. He was left alone, but of course there was always his son there. But then a few months ago, unexpectedly, his son, who was only 42, died as well. Terrible shock. He was devastated. It just, it just flattened him. He was grieving so deeply. And I tried to call him when I found out. I called him time to time to see how he was doing, to offer my condolences, to be of some sort of support in whatever way I could possibly be, which could only be very minimal. But then the last time I talked to him, he sounded so much better. And he said he did feel better. He did feel much better. And the reason was because instead of dwelling on his loss, he was practicing gratitude for the years that he had had with his wife and son. You see, his wife had a very difficult pregnancy and a very dangerous delivery. And both she and her infant son almost died, almost died when the baby was born. He had begun giving thanks for all those wonderful years when they were both an integral part of his life. If they had died, life would have been so vastly different. And so he gave thanks. That was a life-giving approach, a life-giving change. Today, I would like to start by giving thanks for the many people who made it possible for us to be sitting in this building worshiping today. Depending on how long you have been coming to the church, um, you might remember these people and they might, the names might be totally unfamiliar to you, but their efforts, their love, their support of Valley Community Church were indispensable. Now, I, I can't possibly mention them all. I can't remember them all, actually. But in 1972, 
when our group was still meeting downtown at the Patrick Henry Hotel, <coughs> we found that we weren't able to get a minister. We, the Federation had been able to provide us a minister who could come in from someplace else and um, provide um, ministerial services. And of course, we couldn't, we weren't a big enough group to provide a living wage or anything like that. But for a time, we, we had several different ministers. Well, we couldn't get another minister, and the majority, the larger part of the group, left and started the Unity Church. There were just five of us left. Mr. Horvath, Jesse Burt, and Ruth and Steve Lucia. And me. And me. We didn't want to give up on divine science. We, we liked the philosophy too much. And after a few months of reading New Thought sermons, we got New Thought sermons from various places. We started reading them from to one another. Each one would take a, a, a week and, and, and read. Well, I offered to be responsible for the messages. You know, I, I hadn't thought it through at all. It just came out of my mouth. And little did I realize what I was getting into. I, I quickly became clear that I would have to take more home study classes and I was going to have to go out to Denver, which was where the center was at the time, Center of Divine Side. Um, I'd have to go out there on summers uh, for a couple of weeks for summer school. But I prevailed and, and um, in 1977 I became a, a licensed minister and in 1979 I was ordained. In the meantime, the group had become growing and we were blessed with the addition of some wonderful people. In addition to the original four, a few of them that I really, really do give thanks for, and I give thanks for Jesse Bird, who's one of the ones who stayed. She was just a such such a help, tremendous. One of the ones, major ones that I want to give thanks for was uh, Dr. Bill Hauser, who found this piece of land that we subsequently purchased. It was. It had weeds above your head. Uh, there were old tires in there. and I, th I think somebody found a refrigerator. It was a mess. It was the dump of the neighborhood. And we cleaned it up over a number of weeks. And, and he was the one who found a, an architect who designed the church. And um, he continued, uh, I think he was the president of the board for a number of years. And, I would I would drive come over to the church for something on Saturday and he would be mowing the grass, dripping with perspiration, mowing the grass. He was just just such a tremendous, tremendous help. And then there was Leroy and Norma Moran. Norma designed the steeple that's on our church. And she also oh, she was so helpful in so many different ways. She had this, this design uh, for me by Peter Vraden, actually, who's a well-known jewelry maker. And in the, the little bag that he uh, gave, well, she gave this to me, and there was this written, from within the outline of the Federation symbol comes a never-ending, ever-blossoming source of good. Mm. It's a beautiful sentiment. <coughs> I used to wear it and still do occasionally with pride. And then there was Todd Rothrock and Tonita Foster and Maxine Baker and Jean Shell and Joe and Brenda Kinsey. And when Brenda died, Joe gave a very handsome gift in her memory to the church. It was Edna Carter and my dad and stepmother Mimi, who always came and supported the church, and Nancy Koss and Ann Bush, and my own mother, Jean Jaspin, and Jean Burdett, who was the treasurer for so many years and who was president of the board for a period of time, who, who made all sorts of 
fundraising dinners and cooked and she was absolutely wonderful, just wonderful. We're so grateful to all of these. And of course, the Edwards, Bob and Martha and Angie, who are the only ones left who attended when we met downtown at the Patrick Henry Hotel. So they've been valued members for over 40 years and we thank them so much, always, but especially for being here today. In 2000, Doug, who was the president of the board at the time, uh, helped to bring about the annex, which is to this door over here. And it was such a valuable addition, so important. But it, it was after that that we uh, um, found that that additional responsibility, this additional financial responsibility, um, became uh, worrisome a bit because money was tight somehow. And we found ourselves hanging on by our fingernails financially. But it was then that we were informed that we had received a bequest from the estate of S Steve Lucia, who was one of the original four people. His, his wife, Ruth, had died a few years before. They had not had any children. And uh, he was a mason. And the, the, the estate was divided into four equal parts. And our portion was $70,000. Oh, what a lifesaver. Oh, me. Now, with a, the addition of a few thousand dollars that we had in savings, we were able to pay off the mortgage. We had a mortgage burning ceremony outside, I remember. What a relief it was. We, we, this property was ours free and clear. So we remember the Lucians with so much gratitude, with so much thanks. Oh, and today I, I also want to remember Dr. Lucille Frederick. I know you don't remember that name, perhaps. She was the president of the Bein Science Federation in Denver in those days, and she was so helpful to me while I was taking my studies and training. And she came all the way from Denver to do my ordination. And also, I want to remember with gratitude a man by the name of Harold Gans, which you not very, very, if any, remember. But he was a, a member of the Washington Church. He taught um, divine science classes up there. And this was the very early days of the Patrick Henry Hotel experience. And he came to Roanoke a couple of times on, at his own expense and taught divine science classes over a long weekend. So we remember him. Does anybody know of somebody else? Can you remember somebody else I've left out that haven't remembered? I'm sure there are people I... Anybody? Well, Eddie was very supportive. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to bring him up in this. <laughs> You're absolutely right. But um, I know that all of you have a loved one, a family member, perhaps, a friend, a neighbor, perhaps, whom you remember with gratitude for the good that they brought into your life. If you feel that you can, could you share their name with us this morning? And give us just two or three sentences, perhaps, of what kind of a person they were so that we, too, can honor them. Think about it for a moment. Who? Who would that be? Not, I would start with Eddie, because he certainly was tremendously generous to this church. What a good man he was. What a good person, honorable, integrous, faithful, funny, <laughs> and a great sense of humor. Good musician. Hmm? He was a good musician, too. And, oh yeah. <laughs> he, he, was, uh, he had dance bands from the time he was in high school. Friday and Saturday nights, he was all always out 
playing his clarinet or his saxophone <laughs> with a band, dance band. Very, very good, good person. Yeah? Gonzalo Gufrey. Gone Gufrey. Maybe she would like to speak about it. My husband, Gone Gufrey. Um, I think that he, during the time that he lived here in Roanoke, advanced a lot of thinking about metaphysical subjects and he spoke with a lot of people. We had people to gather at our home and he spoke about metaphysical uh, topics. I think I have always said he was probably one of the most brilliant men that I have ever met. So it must have been a challenge for him living with me. <laughs> but in any of Don and I were married for 54 mm. years, which is an ex a long time in today's life. Mm -hmm. And um, well, we thank you, Lee. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And we join you in celebrating Don and all he was <coughs> and all he did. Is there someone else? Mention somebody. I'm thankful for my son. He, he was here only 14 years, but he made my life complete. Greatest gift God ever gave me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. And we join together with you and honor him. And I'm grateful for him. Even though he was not here very long, he made a tremendous impact. Anyone else? Perhaps it can be too painful or... just too private to share. But I know that... Oh, Did thank you. Did you mention the Terry's? Bob Terry? Bob Terry? Yeah. I didn't know that he had passed. Well, I don't know... Well, she has. I don't know about him. She has? Yeah. Barbara. Oh, yes. God bless them. They were with us for, for a number of years and moved out out of town. And I know he became a, a, a truck driver, I believe. Long distance truck yeah. driver for, for quite a while. Well, we remember the Terrys. And thank you. Thank you for remembering them. We honor them and all the good that they brought to life. Yes. Mr. Van Valen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Van Valen's absolutely. Want to add a little bit more? Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm getting a headache. If I think of any more, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Well, we give thanks for the Van Valen's indeed. Yeah, Betty. Yes. Anybody else? Marita, Bob, um, the, the husband of um, my dear friend who comes here occasionally to the church. Rachel Goodman. Rachel Goodman. Yes. And he died several years ago. He did not come to this church, but she did. Uh, pardon me? She did. She did. Yes. She did. And recently, she, of course, has moved out to Friendship Manor. Right. So it's not always easy for her to get here. But right. she always sends her, her wishes to the people here. And she is a wonderful, wonderful friend. A wonderful friend. I think sometimes we try to put people into categories. And instead of saying all of these people were just friends of ours. Just friends. But that is enough. 
It certainly is, and we give thanks for her husband, uh, who I'm sure is a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. We honor him. Anyone else? Well, I thank you so much for sharing. Uh, sometimes it's not easy to do, and I'm sure you have somebody in mind, but uh, to share is not always easy. Now, could we distribute those papers, if you don't mind? They are. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they are already distributed. Okay. I would like for you... I gave them all that. Okay. Um, I would like for you to... Anybody else? <coughs> I'm sorry, probably didn't make quite enough. Uh, I would like you to read along with me silently as I read this affirmation for those who have lost. It's by James Miller. I believe that there is no denying it. It hurts to lose. It hurts to lose a cherished relationship with another or a significant part of one's own self. It can hurt to lose that which was, has united one with the past or that which has beckoned one into the future. It is painful to feel diminished or abandoned, to be left behind or left alone. Yet, I believe there is more to losing than just the hurt and the pain. For there are other experiences that loss can call forth. I believe courage often appears however quietly it is expressed, however easily it goes unnoticed by others. The courage to be strong enough to surrender, the fortitude to be firm enough to be flexible. I believe a time of loss can be a time of learning unlike any other, and that it can teach some of life's lessons, some of life's most valuable lessons. In the act of losing, there is something to be found. In the, la the act of letting go, there is something to be grasped. In the act of saying goodbye, there is a hello to be heard. For I believe living with loss is about beginnings as well as endings. And grieving is a matter of life more than death. And growing is a matter of mind and heart and soul more than of body. And loving is a matter of eternity, more than time. Finally, I believe in the promising paradoxes of loss. In the midst of darkness, there can come great light. At the bottom of despair, there can appear a great hope. And deep within loneliness, there can dwell a great love. I believe these things because others have shown the way. Others who have lost and have grown through their losing. Others who have suffered and then found new meaning. So I know I am not alone. I am accompanied day after night, night after day. Marita, some of us obviously got a different thing. I did not turn, turn it over. It's on the back. I think. Yeah. Are we going to do the responsive one now? No, not yet. <laughs> I'm Patience. taking charge. I'm taking charge. <laughs> what is going to happen now is we are going to hear God is holding me by Reverend Donna Michael. Lovely, lovely hymn.
that I certainly did as I first heard it. Finally, shall we do the responsive reading? Yes. Now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that you'll find on the back of the affirmation. Now, this responsive reading uh, was uh, called um, We Remember Them by Rabbi Sylvan Caymans. You'll respond with the all. At the rising sun and at its going down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of the autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember. For as long as we live, they do live. For they are now part of us, as we remember. to give thanks for those who made it possible to worship here in this church today. It's especially appropriate for those of us who were able to share the names of people who are no longer with us and who we remember. And we remember them with love and gratitude. Thanksgiving is an opportunity to look through new eyes, new eyes. Instead of focusing on a sense of loss, to really see the blessings that we might not have counted among them, having those dear ones for as long as we did. 
we heard Reverend Mitchell sing, God is holding me. Shall we go with him for just a few moments and give thanks? Give thanks for the truth that God is holding us, every one of us, right now. Just a few moments of silence and feel him holding you. Thank you, dear Father, Mother, God. because they are the ancient <coughs> symbols of sharing and trust and God's love and plan. Today we use a little different method of uh, taking bread and a wine or grape juice, but they really still hold the same promise for us because God is omnipresent. We can choose at any time, at any moment, to deliberately remember, to appreciate, and give thanks that God knows every single one of us. He loves us unconditionally and is always sharing his nature, always sharing his good with us on a constant level. Now, when you all get these little communion things. 
there is a tab, wait just a minute, there is a tab on this single, single serving of uh, bread and grape juice. But there is a transparent tab immediately above it. It's hard to see, but there's a transparent tab immediately above it. Yes, thank you. I will take one. Now, you need to first remove that transparent tab, which gives you access to the wafer of bread underneath. Look at that. Is that something? This was just Did everybody find it now? And you'd like to pick up the wafer of bread. And with that bread, say silently this to yourself. Close your eyes and think it as well as say it. Bread is the symbol of every kind of supply. Would you repeat that after me or silently? Bread is the symbol of every kind of supply. I give deepest thanks for the unlimited supply of good that God is providing for me. And now, please consume the wafer. Now, would you remove the larger tab and say silently to yourself after me, Say silently to yourself, wine, the fruit of the grape, is the symbol of spiritual life and truth. I give deepest thanks that my daily thoughts are filled with spiritual life and truth. My daily thoughts are filled with spiritual life and truth. And now would you consume the grape juice? We give thanks for this day, <clears throat> for the opportunity to celebrate the spiritual truth that God is omnipresent and that we are one with him and his good. Thank you, beloved Father. Amen. Now, shall we have the blessing of the gifts? Today I acknowledge God omnipresent as the source of all good, as the source of my good. With this acknowledgement I accept his will which is abundance in every aspect of my life. I release all thoughts of lack and limitation and I am open and receptive to the increased flow of abundance to me right now. I joyfully accept the gifts of life and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent blesses and multiplies this gift for all. Thank you, dear God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Maria, for really great service. Thank you. And Rebecca, thank you for stepping up today and filling in for music. And oh, just, I don't know what to say about our music because it's just great. So thank you, thank you. The flowers today are sponsored by Rick for Thanksgiving. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, as far as I know, things are going to be on normal schedule this week. We were doing journaling, even though it's, and, and we're having, are you all having, y'all going to have the reading class? 
Wednesday night, even though Maria is not going to be here. Yes, they are going to continue. Okay. Yes, right, and we will have coffee as usual. And after we finish our dinner, coffee dinner, we're going to help decorate for Thanksgiving Day dinner. That will be at two o'clock on Thursday for the people that signed up for that. And did you say the cost was going to be ten dollars? In okay. for the people that are coming, uh, the price will be ten dollars. So uh, we, uh, give that to Ann. Uh, Day tomorrow, or Thursday, whenever you want to do it for it. Um, also, next Sunday after church, we will be decorating the church for Christmas. Um, so I'll, we'll have the stuff ready for us right after service. We will get hopping with it, get it done, as Pam likes to say. Next Sunday will also be the last week that we'll be collecting uh, stuff for the uh, Ram House. There's a list in there of things that we're collecting for them. So um, if you have anything to bring, please bring it then. And uh, also, uh, the craft people work really hard this week uh, doing things. There's a tree on the wall in here. Uh, Rebecca just went crazy with this wall, this tree. I don't even know how she did it. But anyhow, there's leaves in there on the table for you to take and write uh, names or things that you're thankful for and put them on the tree. And we're going to leave the tree up till after Thanksgiving. So please be sure that you do that so that we can fill that tree up with some limbs, uh, with some leaves. So. Um, we thank the people for uh, coming out Thursday, Friday night, and working on crafts. We had a really good time. So, uh, Lee bought some books today. Uh, they're on the table in there. So, if anybody wants to look at them, take them. She's giving them away. So, feel free to take them. Uh, she's got some more to bring. She said, but uh, take these and if you if you want them. And um, they're not downstairs. No, no they're not downstairs. <laughs> It's a joke because you said last week. There are many, many books. These were only about half of the ones that I brought today because physically I was, un, you know, incapable of getting the rest of them out of my car. But please take those books. Please look through them and take them. Okay. You know, so that would be yeah, a tribute them. to my husband. Thank you very much. Okay. Also, uh, Lee just celebrated yesterday her 84th birthday. So happy birthday again, Lee. 84. 84. 84. 84. And uh, one other thing, uh, there's a, the Explore part has, uh, it's called Illumination of Lights or something, and uh, like, I forget how many thousand of lights, but we're going to try to get a group together to go if anybody wants to go. Uh, I know Amy, Pam and I have talked about it. So uh, it's going on, I think, through the first of the year? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Okay. So and there's got, a flyer in, look. Yeah, there, there's a flyer here. So, uh, anyhow, I think the cost is $15, but anyhow, if anybody's interested, we'll look at it and see who all wants to go, and then we'll pick a date and see if we can get some tickets to go. So I thought it would be a, a nice outdoor uh, Thing for we, that we could do because we haven't done a lot of activities here in the last couple of years. So if anybody's interested in doing that, uh, talk to us after church and we'll see if we can get that worked out. Does anybody else have anything? Anybody? Okay. So I just, so I just want to take the opportunity uh, from the board uh, to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving and safe travels. I know some people are traveling. Uh, also, I want to take the opportunity from myself to, to thank all the people um, as most of you know, we, my family has had lots of health issues this, this year. Um, my brother and brother-in-law and niece and, and myself, and I do appreciate all the prayers that everybody has given since almost the beginning of the year. And thank God everybody's on, on the mend, so thank you for that. Uh, I know we've got a couple people who still have to, to um, a little ways to go in progress, but they're getting there, so I do appreciate the prayers very, very much. So thank you all. And happy Thanksgiving. We usually end our service with prayers for our country. But may let us follow the example of Jesus and give thanks in advance for solutions, for ways that can be made to heal our planet, to hear the divisions between people in our country, to heal the minds and souls of people who have been discriminated against, for to, to change opinions concerning that, and for a greater appreciation of the good 
that this country is and that it holds, the promise that it holds for all of us. Shall we go with him for the next one minute and give thanks in advance for all of that and so much more.